Hey, check this out. We're here at the RF2KS. We have Reinhardt here. He's going to show us about the RF2KS amplifier. I have one, and I'm thinking about getting another one. So, Reinhardt, show us your masterpiece. What we got Whoa, here? Well, you got one. You know everything already. Oh, so, Lord, this is for my viewers. So, but like, hey, it's it's very stable now. Since last year, we didn't have a lot of changes. Right so on. we had over the years a lot of involvement, improvements, but now we're stable out, so no changes, and it's getting rock solid. So if DX expeditions, they're gonna choose now the RF2 KS. Okay, how many like, are they planning on bringing? Well, like uh, for Boomer next year, we are the exclusive amplifiers, sponsors. They're just gonna go with RF2 K. Yes. Okay, awesome. No other amplifier there. Like Swain's Island, they were doing moon bouncing FT8 on 6 meters 24 hours a day. Wow. And no power limitations on, <laughs> right. on FT8, like with some others. Right, yeah. right, right. No, it's, it's making this way. I, I love it. I, I operate FT8 on the RF2KS um, and also sideband with my rag chewing. Yeah. It's, you know what? I heard something, or maybe I saw something about RF2KS. Tell me if I'm wrong. The S stands for silent. Is that correct? Silent for speed. Silent speed for the pin diode. Pin diode switching, yeah. And That's what it stays for. All right, speed and silent. And it's the most silent one. It is quiet, guys. You know what? Um, I've had the Mercury 3S. I loved it. The fan. I'm I'm a person that likes quiet shack. Same here. Quiet. Um, so I sold the Mercury 3S, and then I got the Mercury Lux, and that's when I decided to make a video. Yeah. The pros and cons, what I like about. It. I like them both, and to each their own. For cheaper, if you want, you can get the the Mercury Lux, right? But however, that does not have a built-in tuner, and I think Reinhardt's going to tell you about the more advantage that his product can provide to you. And, and, and the whole thing about the tuners, about the contesters, you know? Yeah. The point is, making curious why going backward, forwards, tuner follows you and has the stored value, no tune, you do it once, you store the values, and you make 15 milliseconds curious why, and everything is set up to another frequency. Yeah. No retune, nothing. It's all there. But you yes. gotta, um, you have to pre-program it and tune it in. You, you, yes. Once yeah. you need to tell the, the memories, the, the, say, okay, what the tuner is, you store it, and, and even now in the latest software, we got a button called Tune and Store. It tunes it automatically and stores it right away. Right. So it should keep going, tune and store. And even if you would be, if you wouldn't have to st store one value, for example, for frequency, you know. You would get a message, not tuned. Well, you know what, just push, tune, store. Yeah, yeah. And that's I, it, and you're back in. I'm a person that likes back. to fine tune it, so after it finds its tune, I push the manual and start adjusting. Yeah. Uh, 1.01. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes, <laughs> no, on tuning an automatic store, everything below 1.3, okay. we, we take. Okay. It doesn't say you, with manual tuning, you can get, get it even better. Yeah, yeah. And if you see, oh, it's just in a 1.3. It's good. Go manual and try to do it better. And then store. store. Yeah. But then it remembers it. I know. All That's time. what I like. So what's the correct way in manually tuning? Or no, the correct way in, like, say you want to start at, like, 10 megahertz. Hmm? Oh, no, or let's make, let's make it easy. Let's say uh, 14. Okay? Yeah. Do you tune, like, every 25 kilohertz or yeah. 5 kilohertz or? No. It's dependent really on band. So it's okay. down to 9 kilohertz on 80 meter nine. and 75 on 10. As high the frequency, as wider the spacing. Okay. Because antennas on 10 meter, they're 75 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of change in the SWR. But on 80 and 160, yeah. uh, 10 kilohertz can do a lot. It does, it sways a lot. That's why yeah. it's different spacing based on bands. Okay. One of my viewers, um, we talk um, all the time. Um, he has an RF2KS as well. Um, 
he told me to come and provide a recommendation. Is this a functioning unit here? Can we? This is a functional unit. They, they are I mean, not to, not to transmit. I just want to to uh, change the the yeah. dial. You Let's can do the menu, thing like that. Okay. Let's come around here. Yeah, I have a, a friend, a viewer. All right, so take a look at this. Um, some people are colorblind, right? I know, they would like to get this one white. There you go. You may it, have heard that many it's times. It's on my list. Okay. All right, so come over here, the pan. Yeah, for the colorblind people, oh, they, okay. they can't see red. Right, that's correct. So that's on the list to make this white. Okay, good, good, good. So that's awesome. That's on our list already in the house. Well, like, I do get questions about what about blind people. Right. Uh, cool. They, they can work with buttons. Right. You can feel them. Mm -hmm. But touchscreen is... The touchscreen, you cannot feel them. Well, I'm thinking of getting a keyboard attached. They, they're pretty good working with a keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. So then they can control it with a keyboard. Right. And even... Well, we could even do a voice. Voice command. Commands in there. So oh, wow. any failure, it's, it, the amplifier talks to you. Yeah. It's, it's all built in already. Right, right. It's just, you know, that's the little features we're adding and adding. So then it's going to be the first one for blind people. Very good, very good. Attaching well, the things. Yeah. Will you make that more user friendly to make that change? Or would it be like, a, a uh, an option say press this uh, toggle or check mark to to make it change colors no to be honest if it's white it's white okay you know uh, yeah some individual flavor yeah the next one would come in well but I like it in green much better yeah yeah yeah, the, yeah this is this, nah, you know that's you can't a from that's a bar from beyond yeah. You cater uh, to everyone. A, a normal amplifier. Yeah. It works like it is and it shows yeah. you the information. That's all what it is about. And this 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 is what I like. I like this. I like this too. I like this uh, layout here with the bars. Yeah. And then on your last transmission it stows your last value. Guess what? That little thing yeah. is what a lot of hams like. Right. Because and none none of the other hams has it. None, none. So, you know what? How much Even, power did you do? Oh, hold on a second. Last transmission was that. Yeah, it, the last transmission was this power output or this power output and then whatever you reflected and your SWR values. And that's that's one of the features. I don't mention it, but I, I like it. I like it too, but this yeah. is, this, these are the small things. Yeah. Yeah, will make it really... You know what I found is? out too? Um, after you're making the selections, you, you can toggle through the interfaces. The interfaces. I don't, I'm a hand that doesn't read the manual, but I just push. <laughs> I push the button. It's like you know what? So if you're have, one of those many. <laughs> UDP. There's no UDP. There's no TCI connection. But RF is universal. I, I like it. And it's damn fast. It's very well, fast. It takes one millisecond to, to sense the frequency. Mm -hmm. So it's one millisecond means we. We measure a quarter of a waveform from the zero to the P yeah. at that time and calculate the frequency down to a kilohertz. It takes one millisecond. That's super fast. And then we say, okay, do we yeah. need to switch anything? Or we stay on the old frequency? Mm -hmm. And it takes three milliseconds we up in the air. Very good. I, I love it. So, yeah. no, it's, 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 it's really fast. And it sits in this quiet. It's the quiet. I, I, that, that's what I like about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, what do you have in the future as far of upgrades? Um, have a better automatic tuning unit? Oh well, or? we got the last automatic tuning. This last software is tuning time is max two seconds. Mm -hmm. It's and, and some antenna it makes just click. That's fast. Yeah. That's no, fast. the last software version. Mm -hmm. The upgrade came out in October. Yeah. Since then, it's fast. Okay. There might be some people out there, some users that you that you have. If you don't update the software, the firmware. Yeah. In the future, would you have a problem 
with updating it, uh, or do you have to send it in to honestly, Island Amplifiers, for example? Honestly, as of today, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. So you can upgrade even if you are five workers behind. Yeah. But my recommendation is do a per, do a constant upgrade. Okay. We might come to a point in the future. I I, I don't know where the software yeah. guy is telling me. Yeah, but you must have this software to upgrade. That's correct. Could be. Yeah. That's, so a recommendation is to upgrade to get all the latest and greatest features. Right. And they are all improvements. Mm -hmm. Not bug fixing. They are improvements, adding features. Right. And hey, you know what else I I. I sometimes sit in the background, you know, like on the group IO or the forum, just sitting and watching. What I like about your company and your 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 corporation that like your service centers like with John is We got two in the US and yeah. we soon have a third one. The third one. Well where? everybody's asking, Oh, we need would be West great Coast. to have a, it yeah. would be great to have one on the East Coast. Okay. We're thinking about that already. Okay. Because I know John is, he's very busy with, not only with selling the RF kit, but he's also what, uh, when we Tube talked about. amplifier repairman, Tube he's amplifiers. repairing eight comps for the X engineering for other uh, yeah. companies and all that stuff. So he's not really very busy with that, Yeah. but with that, so that's, and shipping is an issue. Right. From one coast to another. That's why we added a second one in the middle and we're adding one in that's, the East that's Coast. That's very good. Good strategic planning to divide the United States to repair centers. Central, to East, yeah, and just west. to balance it out. Yeah. So. No, which makes it more convenient in shipping. Shipping costs. Then I tell you, it's cheaper to ship it from Europe to here than way. within the than within yes. the U.S. Yes. It's it's the way. So, and it's time. Retur time to return, you know? Right, right. No, it's, well, we're on our way. And with the group IO forums, you guys respond pretty pretty fast. I mean, I see you respond to a lot of the emails. Uh, yeah, but it's, uh, it's usually, really good customer service. Usually I don't respond as quick. I, oh, really? I, I do jump on yeah. when somebody thinks he knows it and points somebody else in the wrong direction. Right. The yep. group helps himself. That's Very right. often. I, I like but it. if I see, oh, that's going the wrong way, I jump on. Right on. That's why a group is a group. It's not me, money. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. So, but when it goes in the wrong direction, right. I jump on and clarify it. And when I had issues with mine, yeah, I had issues with my RF kit, but Reinhardt took care of it right away. Like, uh, if you have any issues, a problem you can't figure it and the group doesn't know how to come up with a resolution to answers uh, you can video uh, I like your openness 24 hours well not when you're sleeping but uh, he does uh, the whatsapp or some video yeah one-on-one um, -on -one, and then it goes quicker than doing everything yeah. by mail yeah have you done this have you did this okay now we know that it's the attendant control unit here's how you dismantle it and then send it for repairs and that's it well, I appreciate your time, Mr. Reinhardt. Okay. Congratulations on your business. Thank you. On a well, pristine, perfecto yep. uh, equipment, all combined. The amplifier, um, you said it's, uh, it puts out, you got 2,000 watts, but it's no, US. No, it's the model type, would say, okay. you know. And, but it's 1.5 kilo and no limitations on whatever mode you are. Yeah. Like oh, really? Many. FT8? Well, if I can look <laughs> into the history files, somebody come, some come, I always see max possible power, yeah. 40.2 seconds down, 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 all bands. Looks like you must do full power. Looks like. So, there's no limitations in. Okay. That's a big deal compared to a lot of others stating on digital mode, this 800 watt or yeah. kilowatt. I, I only run like two, 250, you know. That's you know, it need. doesn't give sense to always run, but you can run. <laughs> everybody does it just. <laughs> I do it. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for the time again, oh, Reinhardt. looking forward to see more videos about the audio <laughs> testing, even with the Anand 7000, the previous story. Oh, yeah, I, I sold got the it. same setup. 
I got the G2 now. Okay. Well, it's it's a different beast. A different beast. You yeah. know what? The G2 is actually the same width as this. Yep. It's, isn't it a nice shoe? What's the, that? Those two together, the G2 and this one. Um, I put I stacked mine like RF2KS, and then on top of that, uh, I put the G2. Good. That's for mine. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well done. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you. See you. See you later.